If you are a gigging musician, then you probably have to learn a lot of songs on a regular basis. Now the whole song learning thing comes more easy to some people than to others, and if you're like me, you wish you could just listen to a song and know it after the first listen, but unfortunately my memory isn't that great and I work best making some kind of chart for whatever the song is. If you're feeling like you're having trouble learning songs, it's probably because you're like me and you can't just memorize it immediately and so you've got to make some notes, you're just trying to figure out the best way to go about doing that. I wish I could say there's one foolproof method out there for writing charts and there's just one way that works for everybody and it's just the end all solution for learning songs. Unfortunately that's not the case because number one, we're all different, our minds work differently, we learn differently. Some of us are visual learners where just writing out the chart helps us learn it. Uh, others of us are auditory learners where we listen to the song and we do learn it pretty well. We just want to make the extra notes to make sure we don't forget things. There's really no one method for doing it and I use a lot of different methods for writing charts. I like to write the chart based on the song, based on how complex or how simple the song is. The song really isn't that complicated. It's kind of got that weird groove where there's a 4-4 measure followed by a 7-8 measure. And so I wanted to make sure that I notated that. And so I've called that A, and that's just these two measures right here, which are looped over and over again. Then we've got the verse where we've got the seven bars of four, four, and then finishing with that seven, eight measure. And then really the same thing repeats throughout. So I didn't bother to write it over and over again. Instead, I just wrote same down here to save time. This song kind of goes into a totally different feel later to get mathematically correct. The dotted eighth becomes a dotted quarter note, it turns into 12, eight. So this big 12-8 thing, and then we've got this rhythmic fill hit thing right here, and so on. So I made sure to notate a lot of that because those are the more detailed things. But the point with this song is that I didn't spend more time than I needed to rewriting grooves down here when it's really the same thing over and over again. So this is really a form chart with some detail on the measures and the time signatures. I'll also just write based on what I think I'm gonna forget, what I think I need to remember from that song. If it's a super simple song and I already know it pretty well, my chart's gonna be really simple. If it's a really complex song though, and it's got a lot of different rhythmic hits and maybe the form's even weird, I'll write a detailed chart making sure every bar is accounted for so that I can't possibly train wreck. Here's another song I played with a cover band, The Fixer by Pearl Jam, which is kind of like with The Ocean where it's got these weird time signature things going on at the beginning. We've got a 4-4 measure followed by a 6-4, and that thing repeats twice, so a total of three times we have the 4-4 and the 6-4, and then the fill is at the end of that, so it's this kind of weird thing that's, that's a little bit funky sometimes, and so I wanted to make sure I had that notated clearly to help me learn it. Meanwhile, the verse is just in 6-4 the whole time, and what I did here was I wrote play 8, so play 8 bars of 6, and this is the groove I'm playing. That's just the way I chose to notate this one. Right here, we've got this break. I made sure to put that in. So we hit the downbeat. One, two, three, four, rest, two, three, four, then back in on the bridge for 16 measures. And then the intro is back to B, which I've labeled as this whole section up here. So kind of like with the ocean, instead of rewriting it, I've just named that section B for whatever reason I chose the letter B. And that happens again down here. And so this one I wrote as little as possible, but just enough to make sure that I could hit those time signature changes and made sure that I played those grooves right. So sort of the point here is that you wanna write the chart for you. You want it to be tailored to your needs and your learning. And now for a change of pace, here's a church song that I decided to just make notes on the chord chart that the rest of the band members were using. It's a pretty straightforward song, and so I didn't feel like I needed to make detailed notes, and I didn't need to write my own chart. After listening to it a few times, I kind of got the hang of it, and so I just made notes here on some groove stuff, um, what kind of thing I'm doing here, like really I'm not playing at all until the toms come in here, and there's the tom pattern I'm gonna play. Uh, we've got these little sort of tom builds that happen throughout the verse where we've got this groove going on. So this is a good example of a song where I didn't write more than I needed to. I only wrote notes based on what I thought I might forget. And even then, it's not like I was glued to this the whole time I was playing it. Making these notes just helped me learn the song. Here's another church song. This one was very groove based. And so I just started out on this one by writing out the groove, making sure I nailed that groove including a little bit of a variation here that happens on it. And so I just wrote out the two measure groove and then 
what happens the second time around. So it's really a four measure groove, technically. And really, as far as form goes, it's really simple. The verse is straightforward, the chorus is straightforward. What I decided to do on this one, I knew there were certain things I needed to make sure I didn't forget. And so I underlined them with an orange highlighter. Like right here at the end of the chorus, we've got this extra measure before going into verse two. It's important that the drummer remembers that or else it's gonna throw the whole band off if the drummer suddenly jumps into the verse before everybody else. So that's important. Then we've got this big flam on four, which actually happened here in the verse too. The song has these big breaks before the chorus. We've got this fifth measure down here at the end of the bridge. So that's a pretty important part. Uh, we've got that same break going into the chorus again, just like after the verses. So this was one where I felt like I knew it pretty well. I wrote the chart for the sake of learning it and I pretty much had it learned by the time I was done writing the chart. But I just decided, just to be safe, let's highlight the things that are important and leave this down to my to my side while I'm playing. You want to write out the things that you know you're going to forget. And sort of the other side of that point is that you write based on the song, based on how easy or difficult that song is, so that you don't waste time writing an overcomplicated chart for an easy song, and then vice versa, so that you don't leave out important parts of maybe a more complex song that you want to remember every part of. Here's a more detailed chart. This one I've got every measure accounted for. This is a little bit more of the Nashville style chart. And this one I could probably hand to any drummer and they'd be able to read it pretty well and be able to play things down. So this is a, a little bit more of a professional style chart where let's say you've got to learn a bunch of songs but you really don't have time to actually learn them and you just need to make sure you've got everything on paper so you can quickly chart them out in a few minutes and then go play them and hopefully not mess it up. Um, this is how you might want to do it. And so here, instead of writing like play eight or play 12, I've actually got everything notated out. Sometimes in a busier song or a more complex song, that can come in handy if you've got rhythmic hits that say happen at the end of the eighth measure or in the fourth measure, that way you can write in those rhythmic figures. And so that can make things easier. So this form is really good for a more complex song. Now, having said that, this song isn't really that complex, but I chose to write it this way because I didn't have a lot of time to learn it. And before I finish, here's just sort of a quick summary of my process of, of how I'll write these. It's pretty much the same, even if it's a simple song or a complex song. Most of the time, assuming I've got a few minutes, I'm not in a huge rush, I'll listen through the song once or even twice just to get a good feel for it kind of understand the style, the genre, the overall vibe they're going for, the kind of fills that the drummer's playing, some of the grooves, and then kind of getting a form idea and the overall story of the song. So I wanna have those things in my head first before I even start writing, because that's the kind of thing that you can miss if you're busy writing and you're not really taking the time to listen. So ideally, you've got some time to listen, then you start writing. On one pass, as I'm listening to it, I might just start writing down the form over here in the left column. As I'm listening, I'm just making these notes, maybe, I'm also saying things like, okay, this is eight bars right here. Uh, the verse is pretty straightforward. A lot of times I won't write the number of bars for the verse or chorus because once you kind of get a hang of that melody, you, you don't feel like you need it. But let's say there's an extra measure going into the chorus. We could write a big plus one or plus extra measure. So just making some of these notes here on that first pass. Maybe there's a bridge down here and then a chorus twice, or like a breakdown chorus, and so we're just writing those things down there on that listen. Then we go through it again, then we start writing things like the groove. Maybe let's say it's like a pretty basic, that kind of groove on the hi-hat. I'll just write a little hi-hat thing up there so we know that's what we're playing. Or maybe it's an open hat, I'll write a circle above it, and then maybe the hats close in the verse, but we keep that same groove going, then we have that. So at this point I might do things a little bit differently based on how detailed of a chart I'm writing, but if it is a fairly simpler one, this kind of format works and I go down through here and make my notes. Before you go, don't forget to check out some of these other videos and if this video helped you out in any way you know what to do, please leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out these other videos and click the headshot to subscribe. New drumming tips, techniques, ideas, and product reviews every week.